everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and today we got a cool one because as you can see we have an iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro baseline model on a Magic Keyboard connected via a Thunderbolt cable directly to this BenQ monitor and if you look really closely you can see that we're running Windows 10 on here. And there's something crazy that we're doing in order to get Windows 10 on this iPad Pro. So what I wanted to do is actually give you guys my one month review on Windows 365, which is Microsoft's new cloud-based PC service, which allows you to pretty much pull down a Windows 10 desktop situation as long as you have the display and then the necessary peripherals and then obviously an internet connection. So I have made a couple videos on this on how to get started, how much it costs, my first impressions, but I wanted to give you guys kind of like month long view as to how it works. You know, is it viable? Is it worth it? Especially if you're an iPad Pro user or if you're a Mac OS user and give you guys the ins and outs. And then also talk about, you know, if it's worth going with like a baseline model cloud PC or shelling out almost $200 a month for a cloud PC, because the one that I've been testing is that lower tier model. So without further ado, we're going to walk through very quickly how to set it up very quickly, how much it costs and then give you guys my one month rundown on Windows 365 and if it's worth it if you're in the Apple ecosystem on the iOS, iPadOS, or even Mac OS side. So let's get into it. So I wanted to bring everybody just a little bit closer to show you guys exactly what's going on. And I wanna show you guys on this secondary monitor to show you that it is 100% possible. So the first thing that you do see is obviously you get letterboxed here, right? So you're still dealing with that iPad OS situation that doesn't really support secondary monitor support, but we'll touch on that and how it looks like on Mac OS. But the first thing I do wanna walk everybody through is actually how to get Windows 365 installed and running on your iPad Pro. So I'm gonna zoom everybody in a little bit and I'm gonna get out of Windows 365. We're going to quit out of the remote desktop client and we're gonna go right into iPad OS. So you can see we got iPad OS, we got the Magic Keyboard, I have my Logitech MX Anywhere S2 connected on here, so it's good to go. And the first thing I'm gonna show you is if we go into Windows 365, Windows 365 pricing, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how much it really is. So if we go into here, Windows 365 business plans, you can see that we have a wide array of different things to choose from, different cloud PCs. And if you guys aren't aware of what a cloud PC is, you're basically borrowing hard drive and server space from some sort of data center and it's being streamed to you directly to your display. So all you need is a Wi-Fi connection of at least 20 megabytes per second, ideally more. I'm kind of dealing with about 500 gigabytes of Wi-Fi connection, download and upload. But then other than that, you need a display that's connected to the Wi-Fi and then you also need, like I said, some peripherals in order to control the actual Windows 10 that you're using. So again, these are the pricing. So you have a basic, a standard and a premium. And then if you go, so we go in and see all plans and pricing. You can see that you can start as low as $24 a month. It gives you one CPU core, so one processor, two gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage. So somebody that would use this, I don't even know who you would be. Pretty much just need a Windows-based storage device is what it looks like for here. And then you can go all the way down to about $162 a month. So you have an eight core CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and half a terabyte of storage. Now keep in mind, you're specking these cloud computers. So you will never physically own this computer you're literally just borrowing these specs from a data center that Microsoft is running. So now that we know what the pricing looks like, we can kind of go in and see that they did do a Windows 365 free trial when it first launched August 2nd. And I was lucky enough to get onto there. It was a two month free trial where now we're in September. So I'll still have another month to play with it, but you can still sign up to get notifications as to when trials resume, which we'll see how many more trials come out, which I do expect more to come, especially after this two month period where people are gonna wash down and kind of not continue on with those payments, those free trials will come right back into the space. And then again, you can buy it today. So just go through the buying prompt. And again, so this solution was made for, you know, small businesses, you know, medium sized businesses to be able to control their virtual PCs in a very easy and simplified manner. But if you're a solo dolo person, if you're just a regular consumer that wants to use Windows on a Mac, on an iPad Pro, on any other device that doesn't run it natively, then all you have to do is turn your personal account into a business account and it does that throughout the checkout process. Very simple, it took me about 90 seconds to get done. I didn't have to put in any you know, specific information. I didn't need like a tax ID number for my business. They literally just converted my personal into a business account. And then I did have to put my credit card information for the payment, even though it was a free trial. So, so now that we have our Windows 365 account, we're ready to go, we wanna try it out. I highly recommend going with one of the two options, right? Because you have two options as to how to actually load it up. 
The first one is through the browser, right? I tried it through Safari and it was god awful through iPadOS and Safari. It works fine on Mac OS, it works fine on you know regular Windows and things like that, but if you go and use any sort of actual Internet Explorer, right, whether it's Edge, Chrome, Safari, even though Safari is a desktop class browser on iPadOS, it's not gonna work well. So what I do recommend doing is jumping into the RD client. So go to the App Store, download the Microsoft client, the RD client. It's totally free to download and very easy to set up. So to actually set it up through here, all you have to do is go to this plus button and you wanna add a workspace. Now make sure you add a workspace and not an actual PC because I went through that whole process. I added a PC and messed it up kind of completely. But all you wanna do is add a workspace. And the way you add a workspace is you log into your Microsoft account inside of the Internet Explorer or Safari. You copy the link that's given to you. You paste the link in here and then you let it do its thing, let it load up. And then there it is. So this is my cloud PC. We're going to open it up and you're going to see that right away. Once I open it up after I log in, you can see it's configuring the remote PC. It's getting everything ready. And right away you're greeted with not only windows, but you're greeted with what I was doing before. So this is something that I was doing earlier today. We got a Canoopsie video up. So everything is as if you haven't left it all, which is a beautiful thing to see because it's ideally you're supposed to be able to leave the cloud PC, literally quit out of it automatically and then leave off exactly where you were before. And as you can see, it happened. I had two different Internet Explorer tabs open or whatever you call them now, Microsoft Edge. I had a Microsoft PowerPoint slide open. So everything is up and running as it should. And now keep in mind, I have the cheapest version. So the cheapest two core version. So I have two cores. I believe it's only four gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. So not much to work with. And I wouldn't consider this a powerhouse whatsoever. So this is a Windows PC that you would use just to go on the internet really quickly. Or if you have some stored files in the Windows server that you need to get access to and you can't get access to it in any other way. So that is what this situation is for. But you can see that we are still letterboxed, right? Even, even though we're on a secondary display, it's still just mirroring everything which on the Mac OS side, if you actually, even through the browser or through the remote desktop, if you have a secondary monitor, it acts like a normal secondary monitor. So it's an extended display and you're using Mac OS or Windows 10 on both displays and they're not mirrored. Versus on iPad, it does look a little bit nicer, especially with this monitor because it's a little bit closer to the aspect ratio of the iPad. You can see that it's still mirroring, you know, I'm still kind of just using whatever's on the iPad. There's no extended monitor support. It's just purely secondary monitor support with these letterboxes, right? Which I guess is fine because it still gives you, it still gives you the feeling of using a Windows computer, especially if you have a mouse right here and I have my trackpad on the actual iPad Pro, which still works as you can see, and then I have my keyboard. So if I wanna pull up, let's pull up another Microsoft Edge. You know, your, your different hotkeys or shortcuts still work. So control T, you can go to ESPN.com. You can see that everything is working. I can scroll with the mouse itself or I can scroll with the trackpad up and down here. So it's still very intuitive, it still works. Yeah, it's a little slow, a little bit laggy. So if I grab this and start to move it around, you can see that there's a little bit of lag, but at the same time, I think you get that same amount of lag working natively on a Windows 10 computer anyway. So for the fact that I'm spending, I think $31 a month for a very basic level computer to be able to run through my iPad Pro, it's outstanding. So if, like, if you're somebody that needs this situation, and by all means, it does work, right? And you have access to everything. You have access to all the different Windows applications, you know, the entire Microsoft suite of productivity apps. And I just think this is an awesome solution for somebody that needs Windows 10 and not just the Microsoft suite of products on their iPad Pro. So I've recommended Microsoft 365, Office 365, you know, the PowerPoint, Excel, Word. Those applications have come a long way natively on the iPad Pro from the App Store. But the only situation I kind of see where you would need a Windows 365 or a Windows 10 portal is if you get crazy with Excel documents, because at that point you're doing pivot tables, you're doing working with different data sets, huge data sets, right? You're doing, uh, you're dealing with different macros and things like that. All things which unfortunately don't work, especially from scratch on Excel on the iPad Pro. But again, you can see it's a regular Windows 10 computer. You can download any applications that you want, right? So if you need to download you know, Photoshop or any of those applications on Windows, it'll download onto this computer. Just keep in mind, you will not be able to access it unless you have internet connection. So if the moment you lose internet connection, you lose connection to that cloud PC and whatever you store locally on that cloud PC, the only way to get it is if you get back into that cloud PC. So keep that in mind. But overall, I'm happy with the solution, right? The only few things that they give you right here, you have a, a zoom in button, which I don't know what it's for. You have this button. So if you have multiple PCs to manage or you're dealing with if you're actually in a small business and you have a lot of people using different PCs, you can manage them all from here, press done. 
And then you have a little kind of shortcut keyboard on the bottom here that does pop up. And now some other questions that I get asked is, does it work with multitasking? Like if I want to use an iPad app with Windows, what happens, right? So let's pull this up. Let's pull up a Safari window. You can see that it doesn't let me multitask, but I can kind of drop it on here and then it still works. But now my other question is, can you actually drop, let's say, text and copy it from Safari over to here on Windows? So if I move this over to the right, let's go back to Edge right here. Let's try to copy this. So control C, if I go over here and press this, it doesn't let me. So there isn't, there's no way to actually manipulate data from your iPad and bring it into this Windows 365 dashboard because it just doesn't work that way, unfortunately, right? But again, you have a full-fledged Windows PC running right here on your iPad Pro. And again, it's just freaking awesome that it works this well. And I was right actually, because in the very beginning, when I first got the baseline model of that cloud PC, I logged in, it was extremely laggy, a lot of latency. And I think it's because the servers just weren't ready for that influx, especially of free trial users going in. And now obviously now that the user count has probably gone down a decent amount, the servers aren't being overloaded with free trials, everything is working as it should, which is perfect to see. But overall, Windows 365 has been a great solution. You know who you are if you're in a situation where you need to be using Windows 10 on your iPad Pro. It's not for everybody. Not everybody has the money to be spending 60 to 100 to $160 a month on a cloud PC service. At that point, if you're spending $160 a month, you can buy a $2,000 computer in a year span. So it's all a plus and minus. It just depends on what you want to do. And like I said, you know the person that you are if you need the solution. But that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something new. Like I said, it's super easy to set up. It takes about five minutes from beginning to end to set up. Make sure you use a remote desktop client if you're on the iPad Pro. Otherwise, on any other sort of OS, it'll work perfectly fine, no matter what, whether you're using the remote desktop client or if you're on the browser. But overall, it's a great solution, great little solution for our iPad Pros. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know in the comments below. Is this something that you guys signed up for? Is it something that you can see yourself using long term? Or is it more so of a novelty and a gimmick to kind of prove that, hey, it can be done, right? Because that's kind of where I'm leading right now. Just the fact that for me personally, I don't need this. The apps are enough for me. And it's just cool that I can do this. But that's my two cents. Until next time.